Hi, my name is Chaser Johnson. I am the co-founder of StockBossUp.com and StockTeamUp.com. And today I'm here with Jeff Walters. Jeff Walters, I call my mentor. <laughs> he taught me about options. He got me into them. Uh, he broadened my view on, on financial literacy. And today uh, he's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, what he's thinking about 2021 in terms of investing. Jeff, thanks for coming on today. Uh, thank you, Chester. And that's uh, quite a, quite a, a generous uh, introduction there. So uh, I've learned uh, as much from you over the years. And of course, we go way back uh, to, uh, to a local in-person stock meetup. You know, imagine that before COVID, right? Actually getting together in a coffee shop and talking about stocks, looking at charts. So yep. Lots to be excited for in 2021. Obviously, people have been talking about getting past 2020 for a long time and, and thinking about 2021. It's an interesting time to be investing because the market has gone up so much, right? So, uh, you know, I think as we think about the stay at home, like everybody who's, you know, interested in investing at this point has heard, oh, the stay at home stocks, you know, the return to normal stocks, the airlines. Um, so I think those were all good themes for 2020, but you know, really the question is, what are we going to be talking about well into 2021? You know, as we have a recovery and things like that. So, um, and you know, we don't like to talk politics, but it's inevitable that administrations change, and you know, there's always um, some degree of you know investing or in the market that it follows what's going on in DC, right? So if we just leave it at that. Um, you know, some of those themes are start to emerge as well, just given where we, we stand with, um, with politics. So, you know, the first theme that uh, I think a lot of people are thinking about is the whole electric vehicle. Uh, you know, obviously the Teslas of the world and some of these other, and, you know, Neo, all these electric car companies, some who don't even have a product yet or don't have earnings yet have really soared. Um, you know, I think a, a larger trend is electric vehicles and batteries. I think probably one of the biggest things too will be, what are we doing to recycle and reuse those batteries? You know, so I think there's companies that are still public or sorry, still private, aren't public yet, that are all dealing with that infrastructure. Um, you know, I still don't see charging stations all over the place. If you go to some bigger cities, you see charging stations. Uh, you go to some smaller towns or whatever, like you couldn't find a charging station if you tried. Yeah. So I think the electric vehicles, you know, as those companies really start to put products out there, you know, over the years and years, um, you know, that doesn't say what to invest in the next week or next month. But, you know, certainly I think that's why the stocks have soared is because of that long-term trend towards, um, you know, hybrids and electric vehicles. Um, now that said, you know, Chester, I think we're both more technical uh, traders than we are, you know, sort of valuation or, um, uh, you know, value investors. So the valuations on these stocks has, you know, really gone crazy. Um, you know, some again, who don't even have any revenues yet, um, but, you know, they are really driven the price of these stocks up. I, I've heard uh, that um, Musk is now the wealthy, you know, the wealthiest person in the world. You know, he's eclipsed even Jeff Bezos. So I think for 2021, I think you you have to think that at some point, some of these stocks will, you know, like have some pullbacks, right? Even Tesla had some pullbacks. So you have to be ready for a lot of volatility. I don't know when, it could be a year from now, it could be two years from now, but um, I don't see those stocks just going up in a steady trend, you know, forever. I think there'll be some pullbacks and anyone who's invested in Tesla over the years has seen that. Uh, but you, you should see some new names. I mean, I think that, so, you know, I'd love to get your reactions on this too. Like, you know, I don't think anyone this time last year knew about NEO. Yeah. Right. But if you've been trading the market this year, you certainly learned about NEO. Pretty much everybody knew about Tesla, right? Yeah. So what yeah. are the next names? And you know, so there are a few on my radar, but you know, what do you think about the you know the chance for new names, you know, the chance for volatility with some of these names that people know? It's interesting. Uh, you know, in the last few days, um, so I'm obviously biased because I you know, stockteamup.com and everything. But what I've found is, is people on the site are, are bringing up stocks and IPOs that I didn't even realize were in existence. You know, I didn't know about Snowflake until they were talking about it. I didn't know about, uh, a ne I didn't know about Neo actually until it was on there. But I kind of like let them, 
let them be. But the most recent one that took me by surprise is uh, a company called Roblox. I don't know if you've ever heard this. No. Roblox <laughs> is an old, it's like 2006, it was started. And I actually know about it only because my son, he found it on, on his tablet and we played it <laughs> together. And it's a game where you can make games pretty easily. Okay. And I thought it was a nothing company. And then I realized that he's on he's on YouTube sometimes and he's watching these Roblox videos of people playing this game and he, they're getting seen by millions of people. And so just um, a few days ago, someone, someone on stockteamup.com said, hey, um, check out Roblox. It's going to be an IPO this year. I think it's going to be a penny stock. And, and I was like, whoa, okay. That's that's a new tech stock that could see some some movement, you know, try to get into the Nintendo space and the Sony PlayStation spaces and <laughs> make a headway. But, uh, you know, I think overall people should be looking for those new tech stocks. Um, just on the other side of that, the old ones, the old ones like the FANG stocks, they're they're wrapped up in antitrust issues. They're banning the t the president on t you know on Twitter, so they're having political issues. They have uh, you know the, uh, Google programmers unionized. That's that's probably great for them, but shareholders. That's the harsh reality is that might you know hit them um, in terms of costs. So I just think the bigger tech companies are going to start having a lot of distractions, and these smaller ones like Neo and Roblox could. Could potentially come in and and start the you know gaining more ground than they can. Yeah, and some of those big names I mean, you know invested in Apple over the last 10, 15, 20 years. I mean you've, you've done extraordinarily well. So though I mean they certainly have a place in any any portfolio. You know Microsoft and Apple, or, or Google, even Facebook. Um, but you know I think so with the back to the you know the EVs you know for a moment the uh, electric vehicles and all. I'm really looking for those infrastructure names, you know, like if it's by infrastructure, I mean the batteries, the battery recycling, yeah. um, you know, the suppliers, right? You know, so it's not all just that. So what, who are the suppliers that are really supplying these? There's companies like, you know, Volvo and BMW, the Germans are really gonna start to come out with electric vehicles. Um, and then, you know, where are the charging stations? You know, where's the sort of fast charge, you know, is there's infrastructure there? And so I think that's a hot area, but you know, my, my caution would be prepare for volatility, right? Yeah. I mean, if you if you open up your stocks one day and you know any of those names have dropped 30 or 40 percent, you know, I would say totally saw that coming. You know, I don't know it was gonna be that day. You know, and that's the key, right? With that volatility is I can't tell you when, but Microsoft is probably not dropping 40% tomorrow. But no. Neo or you know, you know, could Tesla? Absolutely, right? Yeah. You know, any of the even Tesla, even Tesla, but certainly any of those other names that people are betting and really driving up, you know, to see them drop 10, 20, 30 percent, you know, in one day overnight, uh, not surprising. But to infrastructure, you know, and again, not getting into politics, but I think eventually, and I think it'll be sooner versus later, you know, I think it'll be this year, is you'll start to see infrastructure projects, you know, infrastructure, um, you know, in the governments and governments, you know, this is local, this is state, local, you know, federal, when they build highways or bridges, you know, there's a lot of people employed around that activity in private business. Um, so if there is any kind of movement to, you know, an infrastructure, a big infrastructure deal to help pull everybody out of sort of the COVID you know, funk with the unemployment and everything else, uh, an infrastructure package would go a long ways towards that and, and would, you know, employ a lot of people who actually work on those projects, who build the machines, you know, and the industrial equipment that to support those projects. So I think looking at anything that are infrastructure plays, you know, could be really good in 2021. Again, I don't know the when, but those are the, some of the ones I'm following. I think there's even some ETFs if you don't want to get too stuck in individual names, I think there's even ETFs that um, are built around infrastructure plays. You know, so that that might be a good place just to you know to watch how those uh, progress. Um, we'll have those in the uh, in the comments below. <laughs> indeed, there are other ETFs like TAN, T A N, which I think is a renewable energy or solar play and solar ETF. So there's a lot of the solar stocks. You know, that I think again with 
um, new administration, new thinking, renewable energy plays that are also, um, you know, have been bid up recently, you know, since the election. So we'll see, you know, again, these things have all been driven up, you know, so it's pretty easy to find things that are above their 50 day moving average, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> when's the next, you know, when's the next pullback, you know, it turns out in, in 2020, the big buying opportunities were end of March, April, and September, right? I mean, September was your pullback. And then, you know, the rest of the year, I think, was mostly up, you know, up, up, up. It's hard to know when to get into some of these unless you were really, you know, scalping short-term trading. You know, I'm a, I'm a very pure value investor, as you know, uh, when I when I do an, an assessments. And March was incredible. I mean, it was, it was a... I was telling people at the time, actually there's videos of me saying this at the time, you know, either this is completely undervalued or the market's about to, you know, the marketing economy is about to just break. So if it breaks, it won't matter. Just invest at this point because everything was hyper undervalued and, and it's, I didn't realize it would spring back this incredibly. Um, so yeah, just to think it will continue through 2021 I think the one thing I'm counting on is definitely some volatility, but that's always every year, right? You, you should expect some volatility. I think there will be another pullback. I'm not going to get into the, you know, how deep it'll be, if it'll be as much, but I do know that when a market goes up, whether it was March or sorry, when the market goes down, whether it was September or March, you know, it, it does tend to go down faster then it goes up, you know, the whole old adage about the market takes the uh, escalator up and the elevator down, right? Like, I mean, I just know that to be true in my lifetime, you know, so, and I think if you look at charts even further back, um, that's the case. So, you know, you can erase a couple of weeks worth of gains in just a session or two, right? Just go look at the chart, go look at the price action, that's facts. Um, and over a course of like a September or March, you can erase a lot of gains you know, March, you know, raised gains back, you know, three or four years. You know, of course it, you know, it ended up for the year, but, you know, if you were watching that day by day, you saw like years worth of gains erased and, you know, handful of sessions. Um, so look for some of that volatility, look for those pullbacks, you know, and those might be those opportunities to get in if you have a little bit longer view. Awesome. Well, Jeff, thank you for, uh, for giving your insight about 2021. If I, if I got them all correctly, it's really about electric vehicles, infrastructure, and volatility. <laughs> those, those are the key things to look out for. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Please, uh, please subscribe and check out more videos from us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chester. All right.